welcome to the Plagues Project. And Plagues, many angles. Now more than ever. Come learn with us. The tenth plague, the plague of the firstborns, is the most difficult plagues of all. I think there is nothing more difficult for a family than the death of a child. Perhaps this is why we remember this terrible tragedy to this day. Every Passover Eve, there is a fast, a day of fasting called the Fast of Firstborns. Each firstborn fasts in order to say thank you. Thank you for the fact that we're still here. Thank you for giving us the right to live. Thank you for keeping the firstborns alive. But there is also an halachic trick. If I don't want to fast that day, even though I'm a firstborn, the first thing that I eat that day need to be from a meal of mitzvah, for example, brit or siyum sechet. And then I can eat for the rest of the day. No, I'm firstborn and my father is a firstborn. And every Passover, he took me to this interesting and important celebrations of firstborns, to Siyum Masechet. I grew up in an Orthodox community and I remember those rooms of Siyum Masechet. There were rooms full of men and I was there, the only girl, the only woman, the only child each year. But for my father, it was important that I'll be there because he wanted me to feel that I belong at that world. I belong at the world of Torah and Talmud. And by doing that, he changed my destiny as a woman and he made me who I am today. Her Oz daughter was also a firstborn by the Midrash, but she didn't die at that plague. She didn't die because she did good did, and she changed her destiny. When she heard Moses cry, she brought him home and she gave him life. And that's why she didn't die at that day. I think the most important thing at this Midrash is that it tells us that we can change our destiny. That person can change the world. And the Babylonian Talmud also tells us about Rabbi Akiva's daughter. Rabbi Akiva's daughter was supposed to die at the day of her wedding. She was supposed to be beaten by a snake and die that day. But on the day of the wedding, when she take off the covering of her head, she take a pin from her head, she stuck it through the wall, and she stuck it by accident at the eye of the snake. The snake died that day, but she was saved. At the morning, she called her father and she showed him the snake. And he asked her, what did you do? What good deed did you do that saved you from dying at the day of your uh, um, marriage? And then she told him that at that day, at the celebration, everyone were so busy at the celebration, but she heard a gentle knock at the door. She heard the knock, she went to the door, she opened the door, and she saw a poor person standing there, a stranger, but he needed food and she gave him her portion of food at the day of her wedding. And then her father, Rabbi Akiva, told her that she saved by herself because she did this tzedakah for him. She opened the door for a stranger. Her oldest daughter listened to the stranger, to Moses crying and helped him and that saved her. But the Akiva's daughter opened the door for a stranger. She gave him food and that saved her life. And I think those two stories tells us that we can change our destination by doing good deeds. I want to learn from this plague that we can help each other. We can help each other in order to save ourselves and the other people in our world. We, all of us together, can make this world a better place to live at when we listen to strangers and we listen to people that need help.